Hey guys, Ultraman52 here. Welcome to part two of the Momocon haul video. Next and finally, guys, we're going to look at the last nine things that I got at the convention. And it's all pretty much going to be nothing but Blu rays, video games, and a few figures. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. Guys, all right. So first, we're gonna actually look at all of the Blu-rays first, and they all came from the great people at Disco Tech Media. I was so happy that they were there again. Um, they pretty much had everything I wanted, um, but this first time here, they're gonna be releasing the Japanese version of this soon. But I end up getting like um, I end up getting my hands on the complete series of Digimon, the first season. Yeah, this is just the English dub of the series. Um, Discotech has announced that they're going to be releasing the original uncut Japanese version, um, I believe in like a month or two, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so freaking excited. I could have um, gotten the voice of Sora to sign this instead because it does actually have a different uh, cover art on the uh, actual main DVD. Sorry, DVD. Blu-ray. But yeah, you get the entire series. On four discs, it looks like. Let me check the thing real quick here. I think it's four discs. Yeah, four discs, and it does have a reversible cover, so you can have the slip cover match the actual Blu ray itself. Um, so you have Ty and Agumon on disc one. You got Sora and Beomon, or Piomon, on disc two. Easy and Tentomon on disc three. And TK and Patamon on disc four. Kinda sucks they didn't spread it out to like uh, like five discs to get all Digi Debt Destiny because you're missing Kyrie, Mini, Joe, and Matt. So don't know why they chose like those. Like I get why they chose Ty for like this one, but I don't know why they chose the other ones for disc two, three, and four. But whatever. But for features wise, we have on here we have um, extensive art galleries. The, uh, television promos and all new high high restoration in hi, in high sorry all new restoration in high definition. So that's awesome. I cannot wait to get my hands on the Japanese version when that comes out in like a month or two. But yeah, friggin' awesome on that. Then we had nothing but some good old Tokusatsu here on out. So this one was like twenty bucks. Actually, Digimon was like fifty fifty five. I think actually all of these were like fifty five each. So. I probably spent the most, I think that's, uh, well, like, 200-ish right, right there, I think, almost 200, I think, right there, yeah. But for 20 bucks, picked up the Blu-ray of Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds. I almost dropped this thing. But yeah, this is a really, really weird, kind of obscure tokusatsu movie. I think it was made by, um, Daie, I think so. No, no, sorry, no, no sorry, it actually says, it says uh, Toei. I thought it, it was Daie. Yes, it's 19, copyright 1977 Toei Company Limited, the same people that made um, Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. I did not know this was by them. I thought it was always by uh, Toei. But uh, yeah, really, really cool. I don't think this has. Um, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, there's no ripple cover art, but there is the disc right there. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, this movie also has some really weird, out-of-place jazz music that does not fit in the movie at all, but it's still really cool for some reason. Like, it fits, but at the same time, it doesn't fit, So, but it's really nice jazz music that just is in a kaiju film, which is, makes no goddamn sense, but whatever. Uh, next, we have this one I was going to get signed by uh, a guest at Momocon named Shocker Ono. He's actually a good friend of my, of my friend Ryan's. Um, he actually did the stunt work for this series as well, so he was a, a stunt man for this series and also um, various other Super Sentai and a few Kamen Rider series. But I picked up the complete series of Space Sheriff Gavin. Yeah, I've been wanting to get this for a long, long time. I think this is one of the first things that uh, Discotech actually did on Blu-ray. And yeah, I am so very excited to finally have this. Uh, it says by Toku Time. Don't know if that's actually a sub company or whatever, but yeah, it says all, uh, how many, yeah, so 44 episodes on four discs, pretty cool, and the front, the back, and the cool part of the different cover art right there is awesome, same on the back too, but whatever, 
So, yeah. You got the entire series, like I said, on four discs. There is this one. There's two and three. And four. Very nice. Yeah, uh, the reason why I didn't get this signed was because, um, mainly was just time. Um, the only, the, the last opportunity I had to actually get it signed was when we were going to the, um, after party for the volunteers. But, uh, as soon as we got, like, halfway to the destination, um, I realized that I forgot it because Shocker was going to actually be at the after party. And I completely forgot to grab it. And I was just so annoyed because, like, I was already halfway there and I already got it. So, so yeah, I was already halfway there and I completely forgot it. So, yeah, that was my bad. Hopefully, maybe, like, when he comes next year, if he does come next year, I will definitely get him to sign that. And final bit of Blu-rays for this video, and final bit of, uh, well, not last bit of Tokusatsu, but um, it's one series that, uh, that uh, Discotech announced that I was so excited to get. I specifically waited to get it at MomoCon to, you know, to grab it in person. But we have the complete series of Kamen Rider Black. I have been dying to check this series out. Uh, Shocker, actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he actually knows the uh, guy who plays Black. Um, I think it's either the actor or the guy that's inside the suit. I think it's the actor that actually played the, the character of Kamar Black. But yeah, I've been dying to check the series out. Um, so, extras we have here we have a uh, recap special, photo gallery, cast and crew reunion, and historical essay by Mike Dent. So, you have the front, the back, and we have uh, 51 episodes on five discs. Pretty, pretty chunky. And, of course, actual Blu-ray itself has different art. Very nice. And there is the... This one. This two with Black and Shadow Moon, his arch rival. This three. This four. And finally, disc five. Um, yeah, if you actually have watched um, the... <laughs> now, there is a season two of this called Comrade Black RX. Discotech has announced they will be releasing that series, I believe, in the holiday season of this year, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm very excited to check that series out finally. Uh, well, and also to get Black RX when that comes out. Uh, but also, fun little fact uh, for those of you who are 90s kids like myself, who grew up in the 90s watching Power Rangers, um, believe it or not, Saban actually did um, do their own Kamen Rider series. They, in the via of Masked Rider. Masked Rider was actually an American adaptation of Kamen Rider Black RX, and holy crap was it terrible. It is regarded to be one of the, the worst thing that, the worst Kamen Rider thing ever. It's done in the same vein of Power Rangers, cheesy as hell, and just, it's so cringy. Like, it makes Power Rangers look like a masterpiece. But, yeah. So, that is it for the Blu-rays, guys, and now let's get on to all of the video games. Okay, guys, so for video games wise, I got all these at Retro Sakayo. Again, I absolutely love this freaking booth. It's just so awesome. Um, I'm trying to actually get my hands on every single Ultraman game on PS2. I am super close now. All I need is, is one more. Because, well, I went to, to the Ultraman games on PS2 collection, picked up a copy of Ultraman Fighting Evolution 2. This is actually is a re acquisition because I used to own this game years ago. Um, I originally bought this game on PS2, sorry, on Amazon years ago, back in the good old days of YouTube, when YouTube was actually fun and actually cool. Um, this is also back when I didn't know shit about video games, and I thought that, like, oh, this game has some English text here and there, so it, it must, it must, you know, play on my, ja on my American PS2. Ordered from Amazon, like, for I think, like, 30, 35 bucks or whatever, put it into my PS2 and would not play, because it's, of course, Japanese. So, um, yeah, and for years I had it, and just couldn't play it, but now I have it, yay. And I can actually play it now, thank God for my uh, PS2 that has Swap Magic. But, yeah, this is a complete copy, very cool to have it, and the manual is actually also, by the way, full color, he has a character guide in there too. So, yeah, really freaking awesome. All I need now is Ultraman Fighting Evolution Rebirth, and I'll have every single Ultraman game on PS2. I do want to get um, Kamen Rider Climax Heroes on PS2, uh, which will be it's, which is related to what I'm about to show off. Um, I think that's the only Climax Heroes I believe on PS2. I don't think uh, Double is 
was on PS4. I think there might actually be a Nintendo Wii exclusive, I think. I'm not I'm not gonna sure on that. But speaking of Kamen Rider, picked up two Kamen Rider games. Uh, picked up first off, um got a complete copy. Yeah, I think this is complete. A complete copy of did not know this game even existed, but we have Kamen Rider Hibiki, the video game. Hibiki is not at all one of my favorite writers. I'm not a huge fan of Hibiki. Um, fun fact, Hibiki was not even intended to even be a common writer. He was something else entirely different. And for whatever reason why, I forget the exact reason, but Toei decided to say, hey, you know, let's just make Hibiki a writer. I, I think they just didn't have a writer for that year, so they just turned him into one or whatever. I, I just, I don't know. Hibiki is just so drastically different, like, visually-wise. He just doesn't seem to fit in the Kamen Rider world, but yet he's he's in there. Um, again, his design is cool. It just it just does, does not fit the whole Kamen Rider thing of it. So, but yeah, again, there's the back. And cool part is you get a bonus disc for this thing right here, which is a, it's a um, it's a weird drum game with like with like an anime character, like a drum mascot thing or whatever. I forget what its name is, but um, so here is the bonus disc you get for it, and then there, there is the manual too, by the way, which by the way, manual is in full, full color, and it's, ni it's nice and clean, nice and full color manual, and of course there's also the main game right there, so really, really cool. Again, I will probably not play the drum game because I think you actually need the, the drum set in order to play the game, but uh, yeah, in fact, I think so it says yeah right there, I think you do actually need it right there. But, oh well, I'm, I don't have it, and I'm not going to play it, so who cares, really. And final game for this video, picked up a good condition copy, I'll say that, because the manual is pretty rough, actually. This, this, is more of a, this is more of a potentially a upgrade in the future, but picked up a complete copy of Kamen Rider Fies, the video game. This one I've seen a lot of gameplay for, and I've wanted to play it for a long time. But, yeah, Fies is one of, one of my favorite writers, even though that his series is confusing as all hell with plot holes galore. I also do know that Fies is, is getting a brand new movie, um, which I'm a source, which I'm, I'm a source. I'm, of course, very excited for. Hopefully it, you know, fixes a lot of plot holes. But, yeah, the manual, as you can see, it, it's pretty rough. So I'm going to have to possibly upgrade the manual. A lot of bends right there. I mean, scuffing marks right there too on the back. But other than that, the manual is, is pretty in good condition, if not okay at the very least. But still, glad to have it. Cannot wait to play it and um, enjoy some Kamen Rider Fies goodness. But yeah, cool. And now, guys, let's take a look at the last two things I got at MomoCon, and it's the figures. All right, guys. So uh, this first figure is actually a SH Figure Arts, and I've been wanting to restart a SH Figure Arts collection for a long time now. And I'm like, you know, look, better way started off with a an Ultron that I really like the design a lot. So I went ahead and got the SH Figure Arts Ultraman Trigger Multi Type. Um, I have still yet to watch Ultraman Trigger. Well, actually, no, I lied. I have watched the first two episodes of Trigger, and I really like what I see so far. Um, I really need to get around just rewatching, just finishing the entire series, but, but I definitely like what I see. He's basically a more, he's kind of a more modern day retelling of Ultra Antigua. He's basically called the new, the new generation Tiga. But yeah, still pretty cool. I like uh, Trigger's design a lot. It does suck though that you don't get the um, Specian Ray with this thing. I think there's a, another version of this figure that comes with it. Uh, I don't know why they didn't include the Specialty Ray, because you get like, I think like, uh, like eight different hands, so I don't know why you don't get the Specialty Ray. I think it's called the Zapellium Beam or something like that, I forget. Um, but yeah, it, it just seems kind of weird that they didn't include a Specialty Ray with this thing, which kind of sucks on why I'm starting to kind of hate uh, Tamashi Nation slash Bandai and more with that type of stuff, because, um... A lot of things that they should have added to figures, they just don't add them. Like, you think with like a lot of their SH Monster Art stuff, they would add a beam effect part for Godzilla or certain monsters, but no. For most of the time, they don't ever add like beam effect parts. Um, like, Monster X doesn't have his gravity beams, even though he's supposed to. 
Um, the Final Wars Godzilla doesn't have any, that doesn't have his atomic breath, even though again he he is supposed to. So Bandai is just lazy, and it's one of the reasons why I, I love slash hate Bandai. They make great products, but they're lazy as shit, and they just don't want to, you know, put in the extra effort to do something cool. But that's just one man's opinion. And last thing I got, um, I was like, you know what? I, I was like, I want to get a female figure, but I want to get one of my favorite Sailor, Sailor Mercury. And thankfully, I found a booth that actually had it. So this is the um, from the Glitz and Glamorous, yeah, the Glitzing, yeah, like Glitter and Glamorous collection. Sailor Moon, this is a Sailor Mercury, my favorite Sailor. I do have a mini figure of her, which is over here, kind of can't see her. But yeah, I've already taken her out of the box, and she is just absolutely beautiful. This is just how she looked like out of the box. But uh, yeah, I love this figure a lot. It's just very pretty, nice and colorful. Blue was always one of my... Blue is, I think, probably my second favorite, favorite color next to black. I think everyone, everything just looks, just looks good in black. I don't know why. That's just me. But yeah, really, really cool to finally have this thing now. And yeah, that is it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the little collection video I showed off, or the, or the haul video I, I showed, um, both part one and part two. But yeah, um, leave a comment down below what you guys thought about everything I got in the comment section below. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, hit that bell to be notified whenever I upload a brand new video or go live on YouTube. All that good jazz. Hope you're all having a fantastic week. A fantastic day, a fantastic night, afternoon. Whenever you watch this, I hope you're having a great, fantastic day. So, yeah. Hope you guys all enjoyed. And sign off.